The Thamudic inscriptions of Saudi Arabia are the best known petroglyphs on the region, showing unmistakably that the squatter man phenomena was witnessed by the inhabitants of this region in the distant past. Representative in these prehistoric markings is the auroral curtain manifesting through discrete phases to eventually end up as the perceived god radiating in the sky. The ancients witnessed this here just as they did in other parts of the world. Separated by vast distances, yet the perception of what they saw, the documentation and rock art remains the same, this is the universal path to the truth regarding the existence of our kind. Wait till you hear this. The striking similarities aren't only realized in the characterization of the petroglyph patterns, but also in their orientations. As Anthony Peratt has pointed out, all world petroglyph patterns seem oriented to the South Pole. The mountains acted as a blinder to the immense auroral radiation and allowed the artist to document the event. The wonder in the minds of the ancients across our planet was transformed to believe that these were the actions of the gods and this pattern of perceptive behavior was planet-wide. The great god, which once shone over the golden period, was now a dangerously angered god in the minds of the people who saw it. Saudi Arabia is no different to the petroglyphs of Utah or Arizona. And this must be a shocking realization of a global event witnessed by everyone on Earth. This was the cataclysm of prehistory that sent us to the shelter of the caves of the Earth from which we would later reemerge. The petroglyphs in the Arabian Peninsula are found at 13 separate locations. The best known inscriptions are rock inscriptions on mountains with the oldest Arabian, Islamic, and Arabic related inscriptions being the Thamudic inscriptions that date as far back as 1200 BC, according to regional observations. Saudi experts claim that most of them are social and reflect the thoughts of ancient Thamudic or Arab individuals. We mostly find them in deserts, along trade routes, and inside cities, which were the capitals of kingdoms. The second most famous inscriptions are the Aramaic ones that dated back to 1000 BC. These two kingdoms lasted from the 10th century BC to the 1st century BC, when the Nabataeans overthrew them. So the dating of the inscriptions is simply taken from the historical record and not an accurate overview of when the event took place. The inscriptions are found on rocks in an arranged or random manner, depending on the writer's skill. On the facades of buildings such as temples and houses, on tombstones or sealed on clay tablets that are buried after the text had been written to solidify them so that they can last for long periods of time without fragmenting or crumbling. We can extract historical information from these inscriptions as they reflect what the people of that era had experienced. One of the most important missions was the one sent by the American Institute for the Study of Man to Southern Arabia in 1950 and 1951, which excavated a number of sites and published numerous volumes and articles on its results, but nowhere does it relate to the petroglyphs to events witnessed in the sky. Anthony Peratt shows us unmistakably that all across the world, people depicted the squatter man radiating from the magnetic south. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.